Sagittarius, welcome. The indoor studios in beautiful downtown Cancun, Mexico. Well, I've been driven inside by, they're doing construction a couple places down. You can still kind of hear that. Hopefully we can work through it. Using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck. I'm doing your singles read, I call it Meet Your Soulmate. It's an always positive read, I say, because we're simply asking the question, hey, what's the soulmate like? <laughs> Show us what the soulmate's like. I used to four pillars, two cards for emotions, four pillars of a relationship, uh, two cards for the intellect, two cards for love and sexual interest. You know, I see the Mars and Venus usually there. I used to get the sun, the moon. And finally, I call it lifestyle, core values, four aspects of the relationship. And all we're asking, and I'm pre shuffle I don't really consider the bottom of this read. Um, <clears throat> pre shuffle for you guys, uh, we're getting ready this morning. <clears throat> Always for you, Fridays, it is Sagittarius Capricorn Day. So, heart spread um, is up for the month of December. And put out that again next week if you have someone on your mind. I like to think of this as if you're totally single, completely single. Like we're clear in the plate, you know, uh, Jupiter's going out retro, uh, direct now. It's going to be kicking butt. It's like 20. Where's Jupiter now? 25. Yeah, 25. The sextile my son today. That's sweet energy. I feel pretty good. Last couple days, better, better. Finally. Uh, and sad. Sun, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter. So, you know, um, I'm feeling it. Um, so, I feel like the good things um, are going to be happening. Um, so, this reading is really a predictive read. It's meant to read like. Um, someone's probably not in your life now, someone that's coming. The time frame is the first half of December. Mm -hmm. Now, okay? Uh, might be your, and your birthday's in there somewhere, March 17th. So, uh, let's see, that could make a difference. So, Two of Cups, this is showing in your person's emotional aspects. It's rather appropriate there with the King of Cups. Let me look at the intellectual. Eight of Cups, my goodness, um, and the Nine of Swords. Um, well, your person has a moon and a sun and water, that's obvious. Uh, and the King of Cups, I always got to stop and say, it's like my favorite card in this deck. Yeah, but somebody, to, doesn't that look like Jim Morrison from The Doors? You got the Pisces necklace, right? And the Ten of Cups indicates Pisces. I think what you have here, yeah, right off the bat, and here I see the emotions, here I see the intellect, here I see the moon, Pisces, here I see the sun, Pisces again. Um, and it's really emphasized if it has a lot of power. When you have your moon and sun in the same sign, it could be conjunct. I've dealt with several people. Um, and there's a, a, an interesting way about them. It's uh, such an inherent manner that they have, that, that this person would have with the sun and moon, possibly conjuncted here. If they're in the same sign, I mean, there's a lot of that energy. Again, if they're not conjunct, uh, then what becomes an issue? Does one make an aspect significantly to something that the other one doesn't, and etc. cetera. Um, but they're still gonna be wanting to act uh, in the same way. So you usually get somebody that's really stable. Um, I think of those pop-up dolls when I was a little kid, a million years ago. Uh, I love these things, they're cheap. You blow them up and they have a little sand in the bottom and it's shaped like a clown or whatever. Donald Duck. And you're kid, you punch it and it pops down, floats down to the ground and pops right back up because it's weighted on the bottom now. And it's kind of like uh, this person's internal structure when they have that sun, moon, conjunct. It's so much as part of their nature. It's like they just kind of like rapidly put themselves back together, put themselves back together. Um, so, um, uh, but they would put themselves together in a Piscean ways. But this is very strong. I see with the Two of Cups here too and the King of Cups um, together. Um, emotionally where their moon is, they might have the moon like in the seventh house, possibly even in the eighth house. Possibly in the fourth house. They've got their moon in a water house, or it's in the seventh house, emphasizing relationships. Could be. Um, so they're going to be extremely emotional. That's how they're going to come across. I mean, 
Uh, I'm not saying you're going to meet them and be crying. It's just they probably got really big eyes. They probably got uh, uh, wa uh, big watery uh, water eyes, you know, um, that kind of thing. Um, a big wide open heart. Um, they had a they had a good childhood. This is kind of rare. Um, they had a mother and father. I think that's indicated by these two of cups. I'd bet anything. You had access. Maybe later. Let me know. Get back to me. Think of this when you meet them. Like does the mom and dad are they both water signs? Maybe. You know, I'm not saying that's how it works. <laughs> not like blood types, right? Two water signs, big water signs. How it works. <laughs> Could be though, could be, but it's how they'd be so emotional. So they might have had parents too, just emotionally capable and uh, mature. And you know, uh, when the kid was crying, they wouldn't say stupid shit like, hey, that makes you look ugly, shut up, you know? They understand about self esteem and self worth, and that's their job to <laughs> increase the self esteem and strengthen the self worth of their child. Um, so they were very fortunate in this way. Um, I gotta tell you, there's a lot of struggle here. When you got the Eight of Cups and the, just just take the Eight of Cups and the Nine of Swords. Now I gotta work in that's the Sun. I think this is the Mercury here, um, and it certainly seems like Aquarius. So Aquarius, uh, uh, Mercury. I think of the AI. Not not to say that they're cold or Spock from Star Trek, but it's like cold, hard logic. Okay. Now remember, the rest of this person is just an emotional sponge. Okay, by the way, strong impasse, strong impasse. This is probably what's going on. Um, their mind might try to tell them, uh, this person is draining you. This per Don't you realize, don't you realize that this person over here is draining us and you need to... And so they would have had to go through some process, I think, by now. Uh, dealing with that so they might tell you about that I'd like to read from the inner processes here of uh, what goes on um, you know uh, maybe like for a normal person it wouldn't even be that strong but for them like they they were modeled emotional maturity emotional responsibility emotional vulnerability emotional strength emotional wisdom this was all modeled their whole life by their mother and their father um, and somehow they still have some trouble uh, with it. Um, so they would have had to go balance that out. But I think it'd be seen there in the chart uh, with the Mercury and just like that. And, and it can even be kind of a self-criticizing feeling. Mercury's the mind. When I see Mercury, it's like, how do we talk to ourselves inside of ourselves? Nobody knows that. Eh, astrologer, I could, it's amazing. I think you can take a pretty good guess sometimes. If you really look at somebody's Mercury, the house, all the placements, the aspects, um, and you can kind of say, uh, because sometimes we, we may not even know how to articulate that. We may not even realize that we have a relationship with our own mind, but it's so powerfully seen with Mercury here. Um, and it's uh, Mercury, you got to remember, it's always thoughts, it's always thoughts, it's always communication. It's not its job, just as Mercury, no matter what sign it's in, it's actually debilitated in signs like Pisces, right? Because it, it's like underwater. How can I talk? How can I think? I can't even get a breath of air. So, you know, it's debilitated there. Um, but a Mercury in Aquarius, as an astrologer, I just noticed over and over and over, very strong. I've never once seen one, someone with a Mercury in Aquarius who didn't have a really good, capable mind. It's fixed air. It just seems like they were. I'm not saying they're all geniuses. They just all seem to have a very capable mind. Could, accomplish and focus on mentally whatever they needed to do and, but I see too with this person um, there uh, with this eight of cups you know this really could be a Pisces person has some addiction things but could be could be but also if it is it's also they overcome it I'm assuming they're over you know they're adults now I think they would work through this if that's the case but also it's the case that this is someone that has to learn how to deal with being a strong impact. People make this person ill. They will tell you this. And that's probably how they knew. They probably had an illness and an illness and an illness. And finally, somehow it got associated with the relationship, very most likely, okay? Because a person like this, you stick them in a difficult, stressful, uh, unloving, toxic environment in a relationship and with sex and intimacy. And you do that, uh, maybe for all of us, but especially like this, 
it doesn't probably take long before this person's going to be physically ill. So that's a story. So that's how they learn to deal with this, you know. Um, and it doesn't help to have an Aquarius Mercury because it doesn't miss a lot. Mind like a trap. You're going to see a lot of uh, total recall there, right? <clears throat> King of Pentacles. Now we're looking at their sexual and their love nature, guys. Two of Pentacles. So here comes some Earth energy. We've got to factor into this. And uh, I actually feel like their Mars going to be in Capricorn. That's really coming through strong. Um, but I think their Venus in Taurus here. You know, uh, it's not Taurus card, but uh, if they're Pisces, I think what most likely their Venus going to be in. And this makes a lot of sense because also this process was a real challenge. They may talk about this, okay? In their late teens, in their early 20s, they went through some process of, uh, it would be in the chart, I mean, so many different ways that you would see that. This is kind of Plutonic looking to me of uh, real change and transformation and they really emotionally let go of a lot of stuff you know I wouldn't be surprised if they might have had some kind of therapy at that time some kind of intervention at that time going on um, and but from that I think they learned a lot you know and you see coming up now as the king of uh, Pentacles you don't get any more solid than that and <clears throat> So Taurus, Venus, you know, uh, well, I'm Venus and Scorpio, uh, sad. So I had the Taurus, Venus, and it's it should be great there, right? In second house, and, and Venus rules Taurus. I mean, this should be a lot. Um, but you know, one thing about the Venus, you know, there, I asked my girlfriend I was involved with at the time. I was very serious about, and I, and uh, I said, hey, I read that. Uh, I'm an astrologer. That's kind of how I did. I wanted like a cute. Hey, I was reading an article that I heard that Taurus uh, Venus has uh, often had contact with all of their exes. She laughed like Aries. So she laughed really hard. She's like, oh my God, I'm literally friends and probably in contact with every one of my ex-boyfriends. This is like 50-year-old woman, you know, uh, since uh, I've been dating in their, uh, yes, Venus uh, and Taurus, you know. But it's kind of like a Venus and Pisces, I think, in that it tends to be an unconditional love universal love you know um so they just sort of we want to open your heart and be loving um and um uh but with the taurus venus and all this pisces energy it's still going to be emotional i'd say taurus the most emotional uh, earth sign uh, and when you put the taurus venus um it, in, in emotional they tend to be uh really concerned like about your uh, feelings, uh, their their spouse. So you and, and the funny thing with your per a lot of times I see someone maybe to the rest of the world they they maybe show a hard face, but maybe to you it's like baby doll, baby boy, you know whatever like goo goo gaga. But no, this person's pretty soft. I think their persona is going to be soft, caring. I mean, you're going to feel like this person really cares. Just by, I don't know how to say, just by looking at them. You're going to look at them and go, wow. He like, like that, you know, some people you're gonna look, you look at a lot and go, wow, you're probably really smart, aren't you? You know, just by the way they look. I think it's gonna be like, wow, you really care, don't you? You know, um, and now the Capricorn uh, Mars, where Mars is exalted. So their Venus and Mars, both are very well placed. You know, they have this dignity about them that gives them strength in their chart and power. Um, so I think um, it, it, it might be a bit surprising, particularly if you're intimate with this person um, and in contact with them, to find out that they are Pisces. You know, they could almost present themselves more as an earth sign. I think, too, they will be more self-contained than you might expect uh, from a mutable water, like a mutable fire, any mutable sign. Um, you would think uh, with earth signs are self-contained, you know, fixed um, in the case of Taurus here. Um, and the one thing you shouldn't really have to worry about with this combination, and it's not really what you have to worry about anyway, this is your person, it's not triggering. But I will say this, so consider this, this is a person that plays for keeps. This person falls in love, they, they think it through, it's got to be Taurus, Taurus like, let me, is it real? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Is that faux wood or, or at hard, oh that's hardwood okay I'm down I'm down so that's what's going on with them you know 
Um, and so anything I'm thinking they got involved in, if they got out of it, it probably it wasn't their fault. They probably weren't in a lot of relationships because they probably look at this, you know, are measuring things uh, with Capricorn, very concerned about, you know, is there a future? Can we build upon this relationship? Taurus wants to own it, you know, that's another thing. I mean, if you're like an Aquarius Venus, bye-bye. I mean, they're going to want to own you. I love that part. It's kind of hot. But <laughs> some of the other stuff is tricky when you have an opposite Venus. So it's always like a push-pull. There's a lot of it. Whenever you have oppositions in sinistry, okay, as an astrologer, um, they're, they can be pretty good, actually. There's more of the squares in sinistry that get you. Because a lot of times the oppositions can also be kind of juicy and come with like amazing makeup sex or something like that you know um so i think this person is going to be solid as fuck this person you know in terms of relationship knowing that this is your person already you know know that they will be solidly in your corner at all times here guys um and probably a very um a lover that's into sensuality, taking their time. They, man or woman, they might be a little more concerned like about atmosphere. And um, with the Capricorn, Mars, really sexual. Uh, but often, you know, they're happiest when they feel like they're with someone and building something together. So it's like a real monogamous kind of grounded uh, sort of uh, energy here. The sexual, it's not like a fiery you know, sexual energy for sure. Okay, Sag, Eight of Swords, Page of Wands. So we have the Eight of Swords and the Page of Wands for their lifestyle core values. I'm thinking about this even. Let me just go ahead and clarify both of those with the Four of Swords. Yeah, the, you know, so they have two episodes. Uh, one episode is emotional in early life and remember I was saying if someone goes through that's uh, this much of an impact of a sponge they will get sick I think here particularly with this I'm clarifying really both of these I got a clue both of them but with the four of swords clarifying this page of uh, wands and the eight of swords um, it's somebody that ha it has a very difficult beginning. Um, this certainly could imply uh, mental issues, but I have a feeling that there was physical problems too that came kind of later. Like they dealt with uh, something and um, they, um, this emotional issue, probably like say the late teens, early 20s, and then they sort of started their life and um, there was something physical that came in. You know, I don't know, I, I, God, I could go into my stuff, but I was in MS, but I had a catastrophic autoimmune attack at 47. Typically, MS will hit sooner. I didn't know about diagnostic here, but I'm talking about something hit them that was hard. Uh, it, this wasn't easy. Um, and the, even this page now is kind of facing back into the reading, back to the Two of Pinnacles. That's the Mars, where you see a lot of the physical body. And this implies healing. So you may meet this person, I feel like, in a time of healing. I don't know, Scott, you could meet this person in a doctor's office or setting or a group uh, that's for autoimmune boosting natural herbs. Just think something like this, um, Sagittarius. So uh, let me know, my fellow Sag, what you think. Um, please leave a comment, it just helps the channel. Uh, do share, tell friend, tell friend, and if you haven't, subscribe, hit the bell, but you'll find that on uh, Fridays you'll see Sagicap here. Thank you guys.